Welcome to our uh, NPTEL lectures on DC microgrid and the control. Today we shall discuss about the microgrid operations modes and its standard that we have already discussed. This is going to be our second lectures. We shall first, uh, these are our uh, presentation layout today, control structure in islanding mode. We shall discuss about detail with the islanding mode and uh, DG and the microgrid connections and its interconnections we shall discuss and revisit it. Then DC microgrid for low voltage DC distribution network that is uh, the same we shall go back to the uh, days of the DC uh, transmissions and we shall see the problems of it and then we will revisit the problem at its present context. And we require to standardize it. So, for this is standard and regulation issues because you know that every country has a grid code. So, I, when you are operating in a microgrid, we require to have some kind of standard. So, standard and the regulation issues with the DC microgrid also some evolving area, IEEE setting up the research standard, some industrial bureau has to stand, set up the industrial standard as well. And the general descriptions and the scope of the DC standard that we shall see, this will be our scope of discussions today. Now, first of all, let us take at the islanding mode, the control structure in the islanding mode. This is a primary source and you have a that can be solar or wind and that is the this is this part is a DC control system and then you have a DC to DC or AC to DC converter. If the solar it is DC to DC, if it is a wind then it is AC to DC generator side converter and you will sense the input variables and generally it will have a back to back converter and you have a DC to AC converter for the grid side inverter and then you have the LC filter to filter out the ripples because essentially this is a PWM uh, inverter that will eliminate the high frequency from this uh, AC signals and this is a grid. And from the grid, you will sense the various voltage and current by the sensors. And from there, you will calculate the reference power. P ref, it will come, and if you are getting the P ref, then of course there will be a drooping problem. So, ultimately, error will be the frequency we will consider and it will multiply with a constant and thus you make the omega and this omega will require to be integrated and ultimately that becomes your delta ref. Similarly, you, if you have a voltage sack or swelling problem, then you require to uh, control by mainly reactive power. Generally, if you have a problem in frequency, you try to control with the real power. So, V ref minus uh, minus V reference measure, you got a reference reactive power and thus it will be a function of the VRMS reference and this oscillator will generate this actually voltage signals for this uh, for this PWM converter that is and that will be fed to the converter output and in that way you will try to manage both voltage and the frequency and in that way you will control the actually reactive power and the real power. In the let us see how does it work, uh, this is the descriptions of it. In islanding operation mode, distribution generator must fit the micro gate with the predefined values because you may have a critical load or some other load or whatever may be, so you have to fit that for the system voltage and the frequency variable. In order to generate the AC voltage, AC capacitor required for an LCL filter used for the grid connection as illustrated in the figure this. This will actually is required to feed this you know this, you can see that it is QG ref. So, this will be the source of this reactive power and also it will act as a filter. With the structure of the control strategy of the grid side converter, 
can control the voltage and the frequency at the PCC that is PCC is the point of common coupling this point is basically the PCC and can emulate the behavior of the synchronous machines. So, we have to emulate the behavior of the synchronous generator that will be feeding power. So, same characteristics has to be done here. The control system is known as VSI control or voltage source inverter control the phase to phase voltage control by a closed loop control according to the following reference. Please go back. So, these are the voltage reference u 1 3 and u 2 3 what has been shown here. So, here you have a u 1 3 measures and u 2 3 measures here this is a basically the line voltage between 1 and 3 and this is line voltage between 2 and 3 so, this is it a rest of and this is a line current between this i 1 and i 2. So, u 1 3 reference it should be you know v rms into root 3 into root 2 sin 2 pi minus pi by 6 and similarly u 2 3 reference will be v rms into root 3 into root 2 2 pi into plus pi by 2 plus v d reference. So, the voltage reference are generated by the oscillators. So, this is a frequency to voltage converter will be there. So, that will essentially generate the voltage reference this oscillators which fit with the phase sheet between the grid voltage and the modulated vo modulated voltage delta f and the desired value of the line voltage or the VRMS ref. In practice generally the inductance of the grid connected choke is to minimize the voltage drop and so the voltage across the AC capacitor is nearly equal to the grid voltage. So, this inductor required to be very low in size. So, the drop across this is quite negligible. Now, by neglecting the filter losses, the single phase equivalent circuit of the grid connection side can be obtained as shown in figure 2. This is the figure 2. So, you got VSI that has been shown here as VM, they have inducted you have a current and this is a grid and this is Vm, this is L into omega and this is V and this is the angle delta in between. So, neglecting the filter losses in the single phase equivalent circuit of the grid connections uh, side is obtained as shown in the figure 2. In order to generate current I and the modulated voltage Vm must be higher than the capacitor voltage Vc. So, we have to see that this value Vm required to be little higher and required to be also phase shifted. The vector Vm and V are corresponding to the vector of the 3 modulated voltages and the 3 capacitor voltages respectively. Now, so the power at the capacitor connections can be expressed as, so this is basically the real power Pg. So, that is actually 3 V, Vm sin delta by x where x is represented by l into omega. Similarly, for q g will be 3 v uh, v m sin delta minus v by x where v capital V is the grid line voltage in RMS all the values are in RMS here and v m is the fundamental of the modulated voltage because you know that it can be a uh, it, it, it can have a space vector modulation or different kind of voltages you can inject and ultimately its fundamental is considered as a VM and LW is the reactance of the coupling inductor or reactor. And in practice this value 3 omega L VM is large and so that sin delta is also small in this condition then we can replace. So, for this we know that that from the for delta equal to 4 degree 
sin delta can be represented as delta and cos delta as 1. So, this substitution if we make, so ultimately the equation 2 takes the shape of the equation 3. So, ultimately V g equal to <coughs> 3 V by 3 V by L w V m delta. So, the closed loop control of the grain voltage is used to calculate the required reactive power to be produced. So, that when there is a sag and all those things I have, I have told you that we require to control the reactive power. So, the reactive power also can be expressed as follows and so 3 V m by L w V m minus V. The RMS value of the fundamental voltage is obtained by inverting the following equation. So, V reference what you require to generate is 1 by 3 L w by V Q g reference plus V where V, v is the RMS voltage of the grid. So, for dispatchable distributed generations, the power reference sent to the local control of the generator, please go back to the figure number 1. So, this is the local control whole set, so sensors and all set is the local control local control of the generator. The inverter control is thus a very important concern of microgrid operations since it may or may not give a new control flexibility of the grid operator. So, that is something we require to be consistent with the grid code and other parameter so that we can control the power. So, there is a many issues related to the power quality like how much sacks and soil you require to connect to the grid and how much interruption you will tolerate when you will call it interruption all the power quality issues will come into the picture while operating this solar inverter. Now the connections DC grid and micro grid connections. So, you got a one DC grid and another you got a solar inverter that is essentially a micro grid having a AC source. Even though a grid connection is mainly relevant for the AC grids, DC micro grid and the DC distribution systems have been drawing significant attention because of the loads. Uh, nowadays many loads are DC and for this reason we are and many sources are AC because we have converted to the AC to DC, thereafter DC to AC. So, this conversion is no longer required in case of the solar maybe you can have a if can have a DC to DC converter and have shown the potential to compete with the conventional AC system. High voltage direct current HVDC system has been installed. So, because we have seen that power losses in the AC system is more than the HVDC uh, uh, installed worldwide and proved to be the very effective and the reliable for the bulk and a long distance transmission line for the electric power. Since you know actually we had uh, let us take a case of the India, generally we have a fuel based resources that is coal in eastern region and we require to ultimately what happen and for past 20 years load centers are shifted in Bangalore, Hyderabad in that side that means southern side. So, it has been found that instead of transporting coal, transporting the power is beneficial if you have a HVDC transformer and same thing it is observed throughout the world and for this reason. DC power has been dispatched in the bulk with the very high voltage or extra high voltage DC transmission. And let us come to the uh, smaller DC sources. DC is also attractive for the low voltage applications. DC power supplies are used most of the modern electronic devices in home for example, your mobile phones, computer, printers, monitors, uh, TV screen, LED lights and so on. We can have, we have seen everything almost there 
RDC, those were consume low amount of power. And moreover, uh, modern the data center have mo modular and scalable DC power supplies because we are storing huge amount of digital data and we are putting almost every day gigabytes amount of the memory devices and that require a DC supply and that DC supply can be huge and that can be directly fed from the solar and thus intermediate conversion is not required. For this is a DC power supply that significantly reduce the power consumption because every conversion you have to pay the penalty. Now, we shall continue with the grid and the microgrid connections. See that this figure 3, we have a PV, we have DC to DC converter. Why to track mainly this voltage because solar panel essentially are the variable DC source depending on its radiation and the temperature and bus required to keep the constant voltage and also it required to track the maximum power point and for this reason you require to have a DC to DC converter. You may have a any other power sources for, for example, fuel cell or batteries or whatever may be and that required to be uh, configured with the same DC bus level and thus you require a power conditioner. And thereafter, you have a DC distribution panel. Thereafter, you may have a AC load, and for this reason, you require an inverter. You may have a DC load, and you also have a battery that is a bidirectional DC to DC converter. Same way for the second microgrid. So, this is the structures of two DC bus. So, common issues in AC system such as power factor, THD, total harmonic distortion or the current distortion, voltage distortion, synchronizations are no longer a great problem in DC bus system. That is one of the major advantage in synchronization. Due to the nature of the DC output, PV power is considered ideal for the DC microgrids because DC uh, because microgrids the solar panel generates DC. PV power interconnection for the DC grids is, uh, is straightforward because DC to DC conversion is simple and more reliable than DC to AC conversion because you in between you require a inverter and filters all those things makes the thing bulky. For example, a low voltage DC that is LVDC microgrid is been illustrated and we have described it here. This system shows two DC uh, distribution panels that connect to the common DC bus. We can have a different kind of architecture of the uh, DC microgrid. The system is based on the modular design and that can accommodate multiple power sources loads sharing and thus sharing the same DC bus. The interconnections become easier than an AC system since the DC voltage is only variable that needs to be controlled. So, that is you require a frequency, you have seen you require a frequency, you require power, you require reactive power, there are so many variables are there. But in this case only you require to control only the DC voltage. Each power equip power units is equipped with the power conditioner circuits because the input to the power conditioner circuits and the DC bus voltage may be different and for this reason you require to have some kind of processing before connecting to the DC bus otherwise power will flow in between them. Each power unit is equipped with the power conditioning unit and that is independently and optimally controlled. And we have a different kind of control structures also. Here this model has been shown that is independently controlled. Normally the DC to DC power interface for the PV generators are operated for maximum power point tracking that is MPPT. Since 
the maximum solar power energy is harvesting is wanted. And the battery storage modules balance the difference between because the peak of the generations and the peak of the demand does not coincide. And also the mismatch between the generations, instantaneous mismatch between the generations and the output. And for this reason, battery storage module balance difference between the generations and the load. The charge and the, dis, the charge and discharge of the battery modules are controlled in order to regulate the DC bus voltage. The coordinations of source and load can be based on either centralized and the decentralized approach. So, there is a coordinations between the different kind of sources that can be done from the central level. So, how to have a load shedding, how to generate power or you may have a parallel operation that is called decentralized approach. And among the various sharing strategies, the droop control method, we have studied the droop control method for the synchronous generator that is for the frequency we have seen that frequency generally droops uh, increases or decreases by changing the demand if there is a mismatch between the generations and the production. The same strategy but here there will be a voltage droop only not frequency. The, fre uh, the droop method is one algorithm that is commonly applied for the decentralized coordination because voltage droop is essentially will tell you that what kind of situation is there whether load is more or generation is more. There is an another option there is also an option to include bidirectional DC to AC converter for the AC uh, grid interconnections and some portion of the grid may have the interface with the grid main grid or the micro grid with the DC to AC interface. Therefore, a AC micro grids supplied by the PV is flexible being configurable as a off grid or the standalone AC grid connected or DC grid connected system. Now, let us talk about little bit DC micro grid for the low voltage distribution network. Mind it we are considering when we are talking about micro grid in the low voltage, it is not the HVDC. It is well known that for more than a century, it was a famous battle between Edison and the Tesla and ultimately Edison owned the battle, uh, sorry Tesla owned the battle because of the flexibility of the AC network. It is well known that for more than a century, uh, AC current has established itself as a worldwide standard in electrical power distribution. But during last 10 years, then game changes has came and ultimately addition seem to be tilted. But uh, of course, with the help of the power electronics since we have a very fast accurate DC to DC converter. Several research work proposes the study of DC applications especially the building ships and many other applications where storage elements are battery they are DC. And you have a solar that is a one of the worst source of the renewable energy uh, countries like India. So, for this reason in this 10 year the situation has changed once we are looking for the shift from the uh, looking shift from this conventional power fuel cell to the renewable sources. The Arbor DC microgrids, the common DC bus architectures is chosen for an efficient integrations 
of other renewable source and the storage that are technologically the DC currents. So, solar is DC current, you have a LED, you have a storage element, these are all DC. In addition, considering a common DC bus and the DC load directly connected, the overall performance is improved by removing multiple energy conversion. So, that is something is a problem of the AC microgrid because you have a laptop charger, you have a mobile charger, all are essentially uh, very low efficient devices. It is because that you require multiple energy conversion. Indeed, a DC network building distribution may use the existing cables with the same power transfer as the AC distribution. We shall show you that actually power handling capability of the DC power is more than the AC power. So, DC bus can directly supply, so this is something that we require to understand. You have a utility grid, you have a energy management, mainly it is done in a central level, there is a power flow control. So, you got a point of common coupling that is PCC, that you got a transformer or the power electronics interface, thereafter you got a static uh, hybrid switches of the DC bus, then you have a solar control that is essentially a DC to DC converter and protection part is has to be incorporated, protection is little bit difficult because DC does not have a natural zero crossing and you have a bidirectional DC to DC converter because of the storage that is a battery and ultimately you have a plenty of cases where you know you have a DC, uh, DC to AC uh, conversion and you are feeding to the drives, DC to AC conversion you are feeding to the LED wall or CFL, you are charging the car and other thing and you may have you may make it actually DC to AC and you can directly feeding to this drives. So, you can see that electric building appliances and the bus distribution where, multi, where actually intermediately there is all having a DC to DC stage and some extent you have also the uh, this DC to AC stage like this is the LED TVs. So, for example, a building integrated in a microgrid system which has been described in a figure 4. The grid connections in operation mode is present in the 4, the PV generation, electricity storage, public grid connections and the electric building loads are coupled though they are dedicated converters to a common DC bus, this is the common DC bus. So, storage is required to smooth the power output from the renewable sources. The utility grid connections and the building distribution bus connections are made by the static state or hybrid switches. Microgrid should be able to optimize the power flow on the bus, uh, power flow on the bus to obtain to minimize the losses to the end users. Regarding the electric building loads, there are three possible connections. One using an inverter at an output of the microgrid and the AC bus distributions. Considering the DC bus distribution directly connected to the DC bus to the microgrid and there is a separate and AC to DC separate distribution system. So, this is the possibility. So, considering that we have to design the standard and the regulations of the DC microgrid. So, although DC microgrid has been intensively studied in the recent years, it is still an emerging technology, which is our research topic now till now, which needs to face the number of challenges before widespread acceptance in the industrial and the commercial appliances. In order to promote the microgrid, several organizations dedicated themselves to develop a particular practical standards regarding the regulations issues. It has been pointed that the key prerequisites for the large scale integration of the low voltage DC networks 
into the smart grid is the adoptions corresponding to the standard. For this in IEEE came out a standard that is IEEE 1547 suitable standard for the AC microgrid, but only the part it can be used for the DC microgrid. So, it is also evolving. Thus, dedicated standard for normalizing the operations of the DC microgrid is highly required. So, IEEE has to come out for the dedicated DC microgrid standard. So, these are the actually overall uh, bots eye view. This is a standard that is EN 30112 that is descriptions basically power supply interface at the input to the data telecom and support 1 to part number 3 direct connection up to 400 volt. And here this can be applied to the data storage and the telecom and up to the different voltage level of 400 volt. An emergent appliances of the DC microgrid standard occupied for the spaces and the data centers. Same thing recommended architecture in the control system of the DC microgrid. IEEE 964, 946 recommended to practice the design of the DC auxiliary power system for generating stations. So, these are different scope, normalizing operation regarding batteries, thereafter its maintenance, duty cycle, typical architecture of the DC system and the voltage rating of the DC equipment. This will come under this IEEE standard. So, another few standards also there that is IEC standard that is for the little higher voltage that is 5, 1500 volt and th that is also the coordination control between the data centers and the commercial buildings and also the EMI EMC issues and life cycle of the equipment protection and the grounding and IEEE DC home. So, this is a DC powerhouse and that is for the uh, low voltage microgrid for the residential houses and RE bus open standard clean power distribution relying on the DC. So, it has 380 volt DC bus that is very important uh, with the acceptable variation based on the status of the source load and the energy storage. So, these are the few standard you can refer to the standard in detail for your uh, own study. Thank you for your attention. I will continue with this DC microgrid applications in our next class also. Thank you.